here, I'm Frank Overton with Fast Cat Coaching, and I have a brand new Quark Cinco power meter on my second cross bike, and today we're going to show you how to analyze second cross race power data. Okay, so here is a power file from the Valmont Bike Park cyclocross race. Uh, this is my data. This is from the 35 plus race and let me orient you to what you're looking at and then I'll talk to you about the, the type of power output we're looking at. So what you see here is the start of the race here, follow along, and then towards over here, this is a 41 and a half minute race, average 273 watts normalized for the 41 minutes. And then, so this is the whole race in black. And then what you see highlighted here is the first lap. Um, I averaged 311 watts for the first lap. It took us about eight and a half minutes, as you see here. And this was a good lap for me. This was good power. Uh, came through the start finish in a group of three uh, chasing first place. So technically, uh, it was uh, second through fourth. Um, and what you can see from the power data is it's super uh, short and bursty, uh, not steady at all. That's what that's what you see. You know these big peaks here, big troughs here. You either pedaling or you're not, and then you pedal for uh, five, ten seconds, and then you execute a, a technical bit of terrain. So let's blow up this first lap, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, go here. Okay, so what you see in a cyclocross race, uh, unlike a crit or a red race, you begin the race with a field sprint as opposed to ending it. So I did uh, 842 watts off the line for seven seconds. Uh, soft pedaled for a little bit to take the first turn, get on the gas again for three seconds greater than 500 watts. And I was actually third into that first right hand bend so that was good. And then uh, give it some more 16 seconds at 593 watts. You can even follow along in orange. That's the elevation gain. This is going up the backside hill. Take a turn. This is that U turn. Pedal hard for about four seconds. This is through the sand pit right here. And then you come out of the sand pit and. Uh, you give it some gas for about six seconds, 582 watts. Oh, this is probably the sand pit right here. Give it for about, oh, three seconds. So everything so far has been above 500 watts. It's just been really short. Um, and then you go downhill here and you're doing nothing for like 10 seconds. And then you did the U-turn and you came back up 11 seconds at 479 watts. And then this is the this is the 5280 stairs, so 16 seconds of zero power, but certainly wasn't recovery. I was running up the stairs, stairs here. Even based on the elevation profile, this was really more like, oh, pedal here once. Yeah. And then you dismount, I mean, then you remount your bike, uh, you pedal down here. Uh, go around the, the pine trees, give it some gas for about nine seconds, 500 watts. We were chasing Robson at this time, so you're constantly accelerating every opportunity you get. This is going across the irrigation ditch, um, going around the turn, sprinting before the sand pit. This is the sand pit power, 12 seconds at 609 watts. And so what you see here is just this constant repetitive five, 600 watts for four, five, six, seven, eight seconds, and then you do a turn or you, or you dismount or something like that. So completely unlike a, a time trial or road power where you're climbing steady at you know, 250, 300 watts. And so therefore, now that we know the power demands of a cyclocross race, you can design workouts and um, engage in other training efforts that mimic a cyclocross race to help you improve. And so one of the biggest things that I like to do for 
a cyclocross race is motor pace. And what you're looking at here is a motor pacing power data. Um, one hour, 45 minutes at 293 watts normalized. Uh, heart rate is in red, 165 beats per minute. Uh, averaged uh, 30.8 miles per hour. And so yeah, let's zoom in on this section here, which is a heart rate of 185 beats per minute. I think I had my driver killing me at that point. Let's zoom in on that. And again, just like cyclocross, you know, you're seeing really short, high-powered, bursty efforts followed by a lot, of, a lot of zero power for short periods of time. So eight seconds at 757 watts followed by seven seconds at 161 watts. You know, zero here, coast, 621 watts, 837 watts. So you can see why motor pacing is really good for cyclocross. Another workout that we like is called Tabata's. They're actually named after a Japanese exercise physiologist, Dr. Tabata. But uh, the workout is like this, three sets of five by 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. This happens to be the power data from Nicole Duke. She won the Pro Women's Valmont Bike Park cyclocross race this year. She went out and did some Tabatas on yesterday, on Monday. So 20 seconds at 437 watts, 10 seconds of recovery, repeat, 355, 342, rest, repeat. And these are these workouts make you incredibly fast. Over the course of the entire five reps in the set, she did 302 watts for two minutes and 20 seconds, and that includes the zeros. So the Tabatas are a really great cyclocross workout because it's high powered, very short and bursty, but it also teaches you to go hard again when you don't really want to after just 10 seconds of recovery. All right, so that's a cyclocross power file, and uh, thanks a lot for watching.